Okay, for most experiments, we would draw a diagram of the apparatus. The reason we do that is it's quicker. It's quicker than having to use words to describe where everything should go and everything else. So we draw a diagram. Now, when we're doing that, you should be using a ruler um, and you should be using a pencil in case you make a mistake. Um, now, we're going to do an experiment, or at least I will demo it um, in class next lesson, where we use a mirror. Okay, so the symbol for a mirror that we use in physics is a straight line because it's a plane mirror. Okay, by that we mean it's a flat surface mirror. You can't get curved mirrors. Um, and we label everything. So there's our plane mirror. And what we're going to do is um, we are going to shine a ray of light at a particular angle. Towards that mirror. Now, the angle we're going to shine it at, we always measure from an imaginary line called the normal. So, we draw this imaginary line that is perpendicular to the mirror. And because it's an imaginary line, there's nothing actually there, we draw it dashed. Okay, and it should be 90 degrees to this line, and we call this our normal. Um, and we always measure this angle in here, okay? So the angle between the ray and the normal, we use the letter I to denote it, but it is called the angle of incidence, okay? Um, that ray that we shine onto the mirror needs to come from somewhere, and it comes from a little bulb, so circle with an X in it is the symbol for a bulb, but we put that in a box, that has just a little slit at the front that the light can come out so we get this fine ray of light and what we want to see is well what happens that light once it reflects off the mirror um, so we will get a reflected ray like so okay so this is our reflected ray. This ray here we call our incident ray and we always draw arrows to show the direction that the light travels and then we want to measure this angle in here. Likewise from the normal to the reflected ray and this is called the angle of reflection. Okay so draw this diagram in the notes. What we will do in this experiment is we always think about what is the independent, dependent, and controlled variables. In this case, the, angle, the thing we're going to change is this angle of incidence. So we might start off with an angle of incidence of zero, then up at the 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, and 50 degrees. So what I would do is I would draw a line that is at zero degrees to begin with. I would then shine my ray along that line. So I'd have to have measured that using a protractor. That ray would then be reflected. I put two little X's where the reflected ray is. And then I would use my ruler and draw a line along those two, I'd join it up those two X's to show where the reflected ray was. I then use a protractor and measure this angle. Now, because I'm gonna be using a protractor, whoops, um, we need to draw a protractor as part of our apparatus. So just over here, we draw protractors, just one of those things we use for measuring angles. You will need to bring one to your next couple of lessons in physics. And we should label that as well. So protractor. Okay. So next lesson, I will demo this. Um, but the results, unsurprisingly, you have done this in year eight. It bounces off. Um, the ray reflects off the plane mirror in the same way a ball would bounce off a cushion and say snigger. And what we get is that the reflected angle is hopefully identical to the angle of incidence. Okay, so draw this diagram in your notes. Record these results. We will demo this, like I said, when we um, are back in class. You might even get a chance to do the experiment, hopefully. Um, but then what I want you to do is... Um, if we can get some graph paper down to the hall and um, draw a graph of I against R. 
we need to practice strong graphs. We don't do enough of it in science in years eight and nine. It's a big part of whatever GCSE science you end up doing. So this is quite an easy graph to do it with to begin with. Um, when you draw your graph, we should put the independent variable, the thing we change on the x-axis and the thing we measure then, the dependent variable, should go on the y-axis. And if you've done this right, you should get a nice straight line through the origin. And our conclusion then for any experiment where we get that relationship straight line and it goes through the origin is I and R are directly proportional. You may have come across this in miles, you may not have yet. What that means is if I double the angle I, say from 10 to 20, the angle R doubles as well. Now that would also be true if I had these results. Now this is not what we would expect. If you notice here, whenever I double I from 10 to 20, R also doubles, but in this case from 20 to 40. And if I go from I increasing from 20 to 40, so doubling I from 20 to 40, R also doubles from 40 to 80. That's still direct proportionality. However, the case we get here is a really special version of that because not only when one doubles does the other one double, they're actually equal. Okay, so I and R are directly proportional because the graph is a straight line through the origin and then we can just say i and r are equal to each other for reflection <laughs>